So the first thing we want to do when we're making a pond with no pump is we want to make sure we get the pond deep enough. I want to go for a minimum of 600 mil, but preferably a metre or more. Uh, while we're digging it out, we want to cut in shelves so that we can put in plenty of aquatic plants because they're going to help strip the water of nutrients and outcompete algae. So next we want to use rocks and gravel. These are going to provide heaps of homes for beneficial bacteria and organisms. These are going to break down all the nutrients and the solid waste that's going to accumulate within the pond. Next we want to use a good selection of plants, aim for something that's going to be actively growing every season. I know that's hard if it's going to be, well it's impossible if it's going to be snowing, but um, here in Australia not many places um, are going to get snow, so we can have something that's actively growing throughout each season. Uh, you want to use a good mix of marginal plants. Um, you know, plants that are going to have their roots in the water but their tops um, fully exposed. And you also want to have submerged plants. Um, you know, things like eelgrass, there's forms of milfoil that will grow under the water um, and the foliage is fully submerged. And through the um, daylight hours, these will release oxygen into the water. Avoid floating plants like duckweed and azolea. These just grow too quick and they're going to blanket the surface if you get any nutrient load in the water. When that happens, it's going to starve the bottom the plants under it for, with oxygen um, and then they're going to die. And then when they die, they're going to release all the nutrients from them they're going to feed more of the weeds on top um, and you're just going to go round and round um, with huge nutrient loads, no oxygen and you're just going to end up with a stagnant mess. Uh, you want to keep a small number of fish uh, just to help keep the pond free of mosquitoes. Um, obviously keep the numbers to a minimum just because the fish are gonna add more nutrients to the water. So we want a few in there, but not too many. Uh, if you allow the storm water to flow into the pond, just without treating it first, it's gonna be full of nutrients and sediment. Uh, what I like to do is um, run it through a couple of like little pools like that are like wetlands, just heaps of plants, mainly all um, plants, sort of marginal plants, um, so that the water just passes off the roots. It slows the water down, the sediments can fall out of the water and we can remove some of the nutrients. Now, if at all possible, you want to get some kind of agitation into the water. Um, so, you know, these days you, you've got plenty of little solar um, oxygenator pumps that you hook an air stone up to, and that'll just like create some ripples across the water that's going to agitate that water. Um, by providing that water agitation and that oxygen exchange, it's going to help the bacteria in the water really supercharge them so that they can consume more nutrients and waste. Um, over time, sediments are going to build up. Um, now every pond's different, so <laughs> how long that takes is going to just vary from pond to pond. Um, but every few years, um, if you can, like divert the water away from the pond, let it drain out um, and get in there and remove um, the sediments at least as much as you can. Um, if possible, run an extension lead down there, get a sump pump and pump it out. Um, 
you know, good sump pumps will remove all the dirty water, so it'll take a lot of that sediment out with it. Um, and then you can allow the pond to fill up um, and you should be good to go. Because if you let the sediments just keep building up and building up, eventually um, it's not going to be a pond anymore and it's going to be more of a bog. Um, that's yeah just a lot of a lot of plant matter and a lot of mud um yeah so if you want to keep it as a pond you're going to have to remove sediments from time to time um that's about it um if this has been helpful go ahead and subscribe um you can read more about building a pond with no pump at ozponds.com uh, thanks for watching see ya